What gears do you what would you recommend for 34 inch tires? 4.56 okay with my setup. Should I even re-gear? What gear ratio should we switch to? Hey what up squad it's your boy KFlow and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can figure out which gear ratio is the best for your differentials. Now let's get this thing started. Now I've gotten many questions ever since I posted the re-gearing series on YouTube and hopefully this video will clarify a few things for you and give you a little bit of a decision making process with which gear ratio it is that you would want to pick for your truck because there are definitely a handful of gear ratios to pick from you have for example 4.3 4.56 4.88 and 5.29 and then on top of that your setup also varies if you have armor and if you have extra weight that varies which type of gear ratio you want to pick and then if you also have larger tires so you have tires ranging from 33s 35s 37s 40s the list goes on and on as to which variable will be affecting the gear ratio and then lastly you also have the automatic and manual transmission. And if you haven't watched my re-gearing 101 video, you'll see that the torque output for the manual transmission is actually more than the torque output for the automatic transmission. So there's so much variables and I can definitely see why many of you guys are indecisive as to which gear ratio to pick for your truck and for your application. Now, if you haven't seen my Regearing 101 video, I highly suggest that you guys watch that first. In that video, I go over what regearing is and how it works and why you need to do it. So now let's go over the decision making points when it comes to regearing your truck. In my Regearing 101 video, I do go over the gear ratio of the manual transmission versus the automatic transmission. And you'll be able to see that the torque transfer from the motor is much greater on a manual transmission than on an automatic transmission. When you're going from stock size to 33s or 35s, you're actually reducing the torque output. And what happens is the acceleration will feel a lot more sluggish when you go with these bigger tires. All that camping gear, all that armor, all that recovery gear, everything that you put on the truck increases the overall weight, which will also increase the rolling resistance, which will also make your truck feel a lot more sluggish when you're trying to accelerate. Now the fourth and final decision making point will be whether or not you're going to be using your truck more for off-road crawling or on-road highway driving this will become a balancing act. If you're doing more rock crawling, you'll definitely want as much torque transfer as possible to the wheels. When you're driving more on the highways, you definitely want to optimize as much of your MPG as possible. And that's keeping the RPM as low as possible without sacrificing too much of the torque. Now let's get into the quick explanation of the math so that you guys have a better understanding. And a lot of these concepts will be recapped from the Regearing 101 video. The gear ratio number, like 4.88, 5.29, pretty much tells you how many times the drive shaft will spin before the wheel itself does one full rotation. And in order for us to figure out the wheel RPM based on the engine RPM, all we have to do is multiply the gear ratios from the engine to the transmission to the transfer case and to the axle itself. Just multiply that across. So therefore, we take our engine RPM, which will pretty much give us the wheel RPM. And once we have the tire diameter, we can also figure out the tire speed. And this tire speed is actually the speed of the truck as it's driving down the highway. Mind blowing, right? <laughs> So now that we know how to get the wheel and tire speed at a certain RPM, we could put that on an Excel spreadsheet with the RPM on the one side 
and the wheel and tire speed on the other side. And this spreadsheet is just for the stock wheel and tire size. So now we could put that Excel spreadsheet on a chart with the X axis as the RPMs of the motor and the Y axis as the speed of the truck. Now we can also add varying wheel and tire sizes as well as regearing choices. And we get this work of art. Now this chart basically tells you how high your RPMs are when you're going on highway speeds with the various choices that you make with tire and wheel combo as well as whichever gears you choose. And we also recreate this chart for the automatic transmission. Now the automatic transmission does have another layer of complexity because the stock gearing is actually a lot lower than the gearing for the manual transmission. That's why the automatic transmission has a tendency of gear hunting between the last two gears. We can get more into the details of that towards the end of this video, but for now we'll continue using manual transmission as an example. So please make sure you do watch this video entirely because all of these ideas will build off of each other. So here's an example to give you a better understanding of how you can read this chart. So if you're driving down the highway at 65 miles per hour with 5.29s as your gear ratio and you're also using stock tire sizes, your RPM will be screaming at around 3250 to 3300 RPMs. Now use these charts and ask yourself, am I going to be comfortable driving my truck at this highway speed and the RPM going this high. Now you're probably thinking all this data looks good on paper, but how does it compare to reality itself? So I did take speed and RPM data for 65, 70, and 75 miles per hour using Google Maps for capturing speed so that it's consistent. I did this for my 33 inch tires and 35 inch tires on my 488 gearing. Here's a chart of what data I captured in reality when it comes to the actual speed of the truck given the RPM. And as you can see, it's very close. It's definitely a very close approximation in terms of the calculation that I made. Now let's start the decision analysis with the three most popular gear ratios out there, which is 4.56, 4.88, and 5.29. So, do you have a manual transmission or an automatic transmission? So now you look at the proper graph and then figure out your comfortable highway cruising speed. Now let's say your comfortable driving speed is 75 miles per hour. And if we take a look at the chart, 75 miles per hour at everything stock, your RPMs will be at roughly 2500 RPM. And if you examine the graph closely, the more you move to the right, the higher the actual torque output will be, but the higher the RPMs will be too at cruising speeds. So that you guys can follow the decision making process, we'll use my truck as an example. I have a 2009 Toyota Tacoma TRD Sport with a four wheel camper, 35 inch tires, and a manual transmission. Now the second part of this decision making process is picking the wheel and tire combination that you want to end with. And as I said, I have 35 inch tires so we'll use that in this case study. And the closest one right now to stock speeds will be 4.56 with the 35 inch tires. Now the third step will be to figure out how heavy your truck is planning to be. Now, if you're keeping the rest of the weight pretty much stock and maybe adding a couple camping gear, you're probably better off staying at 4.56. So here's a little bit of a guideline. If you're adding less than 500 pounds, you can probably stay at the gear ratio that you picked from the decision before. If you're adding more than 500 pounds, you can probably go to the next higher gear ratio. And if you're adding more than a thousand pounds, then you could probably go two steps higher in the gear ratio. So just remember, the heavier your truck, the more torque you'll need and the higher gear ratio that you'll need as well. Like for example, 
before I went and re-geared my truck, I had stock gear ratio with 33 inch tires and I did have to keep downshifting from 6th gear to 5th gear anytime there's a slight incline on the highway and that pretty much killed my gas mileage. Now going back to the decision steps, with my 4 wheel camper that weighs over 1000 pounds, I would go from 4.56 and then skip to 5.29. So now you can further refine your decision by figuring out whether or not you're doing more rock crawling or more highway driving. So if you're doing more highway driving, you should probably move left on the chart. So if you end up at 5.29, you should probably go back to 4.88. But if you're doing more rock crawling, then you could probably stay where you are or even go higher in gear ratio. And right now, 5.29 is the highest gear ratio you can go with. So again, using my truck as an example, since I do more highway driving and road trips, I switched my decision from 5.29 to 4.88. And that ultimately became the decision that I made when I chose 4.88 for my truck. So here's the speed analysis chart for the automatic transmission. Starting from the far left here is the stock tires with the stock gearing for the automatic. And I also did put in the manual transmission here with the dotted line as well, just to compare the two. And you can see that because it's further on the left, it does have a lower torque transfer than the manual transmission. That's why the automatic has a tendency of gear hunting because it does not have enough torque to push the truck. So for your analysis, if you do have auto, I would start using this line here for the manual as your baseline, because that's definitely a good place to start. So let's go through the decision tree, guys. Let's say you want 35s on your truck, and you also want a four wheel camper like me. So starting out, we'll use this dotted line, manual transmission, as our trend line. The closest thing to that trend line for 35s would be the 488. Now if you want to go heavy with 35s, then we'll go to the next higher gear ratio, which is the 5.29 with 35s. And that's going to lie right here. So if you're doing more highway driving, I would probably go with the 4.88. But if you're doing more rock crawling, I would definitely go with the 5.29. Oh yeah, just to note guys, if you are slightly overgeared, it allows you an option to at least go bigger tires in the future. So I would recommend erring more to being overgeared than being undergeared. Now this decision you end up with is just a recommendation from me at this point. You can do some further research on your own to figure out what works best for you, but at least you'll have a good place to start. You'll also have to think about it again. Am I going to be comfortable driving at this speed, at this RPM, with this gear. you also have to take MPGs into your analysis if you really want better gas mileage on your truck. Because keep in mind, the more torque that you have, the higher the RPMs are at the cruising speed, which will also sacrifice your MPGs. So yeah, definitely just take that into account. I would also highly advise you guys slide your DMs to your favorite taco builds because they'll definitely give you a little bit more insight to the gear and tire combinations for the builds. <laughs> I got a package for you too, all right. So for me guys, I thought 4.88 with my manual transmission Tacoma actually worked out perfectly with my four wheel camper and 35s. There's definitely a lot of torque to still maintain my highway cruising speed without having a downshift even with my 1000 pound camper on. And when I take the camper off and I'm doing a more off-road heavy trip, there's definitely much more torque for me to tackle a lot of these trails. So I'm really happy with this choice. So I do get kind of the best of both worlds when it comes to on-road driving with the camper and off-road driving without the camper. Here's a few more build examples you can use as a reference. 
Jim, you can find him as Ripcord on Instagram, has an automatic transmission with 4.56 on his 35s. Brian at Tacoma Holic has automatic transmission with 4.88 on his 35s. Randy at 4Low Pro has a manual transmission with 4.88 on his 35s. Diego at Lord of Spicy Tacos has a manual transmission with 4.88 on his 39s. So just a quick shout out to all these guys and make sure you give them a follow on Instagram. Just a quick heads up, if any of you need a rear axle, Diego is selling his rear axle fresh with 4.88 Yukon gears with functioning e-lockers. He recently upgraded to Dana 60s with ARB lockers. And he said he'll be throwing in 35 spline chromoly axles. So make sure you guys reach out to him at Lord of Spicy Tacos if you do need a rear axle. Now here are some final thoughts guys. Regearing is definitely one of the most expensive mods you can put for your truck. And that's definitely a mod you also want to do right the first time. So definitely plan your build accordingly. Hopefully this video gives you a bit of a good outline with your decision making process with whichever re-gear ratio you pick for your truck. Now I'll post the diagrams of this decision making process as well as the charts that you guys saw so that you can reference it on your own. This will be on my website so make sure you check that out at kflow-crave.com. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. Make sure you smash that like, subscribe and hit that bell too while you're at it. Until next time, peace.